what are the ways in which disruption actually has an impact on an industry? Uh, the first is dramatically lower price. And a couple good examples are Amazon Web Services and Airbnb. Uh, you know, in the old days, you had to go, if you wanted to build your technology company, you had to go buy your hardware, you had to buy blades, uh, you had to get a network, et cetera, et cetera. You had to buy a big software license. Now with Amazon Web Services, it's all scalable in the cloud, very low cost. You can move it up and down according to how quickly your business grows. And that only accelerates the ability of technology startups. A lot of these things actually are a flywheel that kind of once it gets going, it has a momentum and it actually helps the other elements of this chart reinforce each other. The other thing that happens is greater distribution. What happens with technology is access increases. You're able to get your product to people in ways you couldn't before. In the old model, you had to have sales organizations and retail clout and distribution and scale were what companies listed as their competitive advantage. And that's really been shattered now. And companies can go direct to consumers at much lower cost than they used to. You know, Netflix and, and, and Amazon, good examples of that. The third thing that happens is you get new modalities, um, new modalities, completely new ways of consuming and envisioning the product. I think Spotify is a good example here. Um, you know, the music industry was reluctant for good reason, I think you could say, they were worried about digital rights management and what would happen to their intellectual property if they embraced digital. They were then forced by Napster, a pretty much a legal peer-to-peer -peer ability to pirate that it kind of forced their hand and they had to go in. And then Steve Jobs came and created a great experience with the iPod and, and the iTunes. But it was still, this, in some ways, the same mode, that you bought a piece of music and you owned it in a library. And Spotify is a completely different modality. It's just you're renting music and you can have the whole library. You can have every song, but you're renting it. And the whole algorithms behind it that help you with discovery have changed the experience of what it is like to listen to music and discover it. It's completely out of sequence, and it's it, driven by algorithms and, and, and other filters. So uh, another thing that happens is you can get step changes in functionality and user experience. You know, I think Uber is a great example of this. It's just a delight to use. I know they're here in this market. I saw a big billboard for them. And then there's a possibility of whole new markets that didn't exist. I mean, before Google, the people didn't spend their time just browsing around, one idea would lead to another and lead to another. Um, I mean, maybe there was that odd person at the library who was reading every periodical and looking at the microfiche, but now it's quite common for people to lose half an hour or 40 minutes. It's, an, it's a use of time that didn't even exist before. Minecraft is another example of that. I think one common theme that all these things do is they expand access, which I think uh, is one of the reasons that we're very excited in higher education for, for what can happen here. Um, if we talk, talk through a couple examples here, one, I'm going to talk first about the price example, uh, and I'll use the brokerage industry. In the old days, there was this model or assumption that you needed brokers and consumers weren't going to be interested in the complexity of, of doing investing, and the price to trade stocks was extremely high. And then what happened is the online brokers came in and disrupted this industry and allowed consumers to actually get involved in investing. And now, those traditional brokers actually focus more on advisory services. And the price to make a trade is tremendously low. I think a Scott trade is like under $10. So big, big change in this business. Um, another example is, from my world, is uh, leisure travel booking. Uh, many of you may remember the old days where you'd go to a travel agent who looks something like this guy. And you know, he, he, you'd say you want to go somewhere, and you get presented two or three options. There weren't, probably weren't any pictures. Um, you'd ask the agent, had they ever been there? Chances are they had not been there. So you didn't have really reliable reviews of the property. And you really had to trust them. And in many instances, they were selling you something based upon the commission rather than what was the best product for you. And it was all in this mysterious green screen code. And then the online travel agents and review sites like TripAdvisor completely changed that. They gave the consumer uh, what we called choice and control. We gave the consumer the power, not the travel agent. The consumer could see every piece of inventory, every piece of pricing, every guest re review, every guest photo, and compare them with reviews to other people.